I thank God for this opportunity that once again I have to be able to speak before you this morning. I entitled my uh, message this morning how postponed, how often do we do this? Or in Tagalog it says, and I translated it, pagpapaliban gaano kanalas I was actually reading an article about, you know, postponement or what we are also calling as procrastination. This was written by one Christian author and it says, you know, this is not a local issue. It is true, wherever we are, regardless of our sex, regardless of our marital status, regardless of our age, regardless even of our academic background, regardless of our economic status, regardless even of our nationality, this is actually very rampant. Who said is a university student who has a week to study for an exam but ends up postponing until the night before. Maria is a student who wastes hours browsing social media before finally managing to get started on an assignment or on a homework. Who won? Who won? Got some misunderstanding with his siblings because of some money matters. Realizing that it is too insignificant as a reason for not speaking to them for almost a decade, just imagine 10 years without speaking to his siblings without speaking to his loved ones. He planned to call them, but keep on postponing it as he could not get enough courage. These are just few examples of what we are calling as delaying or procrastination. An article stated, and I would like to quote this one. It says, Procrastination is so common among students that the tendency to procrastinate on tasks until right before they are due is sometimes referred to as the student syndrome. It is so widespread that it is already a pandemic. It is not only confined okay, here in the Philippines, it is not only confined in another country, but this is actually a worldwide problem. Until now, okay? Be it a student, be it someone is a professional, be it someone is a family person, be it someone is a leader, okay? This is actually very rampant. I read a story mentioning that a scholar once surveyed the scriptures to discover the most significant words in all the Bible. He wanted to find the saddest word in the Bible. He wanted to find the most emotional word that has been written in the Bible. He wanted to find and take note of this, the most dangerous word in the Bible. You know what? Okay? According to that article, he identified it as the word, would you believe it or not? The word is tomorrow. The word is tomorrow. The word he said is a tip that drops dreamers of their dreams and talented persons of their greatest achievements. It keeps us 
when we are actually postponing to do something, okay, to get that success, to be able okay, even okay, to discover the kind of life that God is longing for us to have. Procrastination or delaying is a thief of time. Ito yung magnanakaw ng ating oras. We may not be able to confront it just like the examples that I have mentioned to you. You may, you may not be a student just like Juan or Maria or someone else. Okay? It may be coming to you in a different way. We may be confronting it in a different manner. But it comes to us time and again. What would be the value, you know, of our life if we don't have that kind of problem? I know eh, many would actually be successful in this life. One thing that we need to remember, postponement, or what we are calling as procrastination steals our opportunity to serve. Did you hear that? Postponement or procrastination steals our opportunity to serve. Nanakawin yan ang ating pagkataon para maglingkod. Okay? In Luke 9, 59 to 60, we have read that verse, but let me just read it again to you. Verse 59, it says, He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still, another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to a blow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. It seems that it is actually, you know, very, a very inflexible approach, especially to someone who would like to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. It seems, okay, that it is very firm. It seems that it is actually very stringent, okay, but the Lord is we try to tell us we must keep on checking our own tendency to put things aside okay, for the little ones. One author actually mentioned that this could be called as the tyranny of the virgin. Okay? He would be in if we are actually trying to put okay, some things okay, that are less important, okay, above the things that are actually more important. Okay? When you travel, I know many of you are traveling here, okay? some airlines will actually allow you to, to have a limit of only 23 kilos. Okay? Well, some okay, would actually allow you to have you know, 30 kilos, okay, as you want to bring as much as possible, okay, marami kang gustong ilagay doon, okay, but, you know, you will not bring it all. You need to prioritize, okay, you need to pr prioritize. I have several colleagues, okay, back then, that started to enroll, in, you know, the graduate school. Okay? But they were not able to finish it until today. I left, you know, at the university that I was connected before some around uh, 12 years ago. But when I went back last week, some of them were not able to finish it. They started it okay, 12 years ago. But until now, they were not able to finish it. Okay? I don't know their reason. Okay? But, you know what? Okay? It, it, it tells me, okay, they have, you know, put it behind. 
okay, other reasons. That is why okay, it was not their priority. I know, okay, I'm speaking to some of you here because that is a problem not only of you but also okay, it's a problem that is very rampant. It is actually a problem for all of us. When Jesus brought okay, these three disciples, okay, Peter, James, and John, and left the eight okay, behind, okay, they were supposed to support him in prayer. That is found in Matthew 26, 36 to 41. This is what it says. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while they go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. He's sleeping. Could you mean, uh, could you men want keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. And verse 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This happened not only once. Okay? They not actually their most meaningful time with the Lord Jesus Christ. They were actually sleeping and the Lord Jesus Christ was expecting them to be praying during that particular time. Is it not the same with us also? Okay. Many times we give in to weakness. We were sleeping or we <coughs> are sleeping. We are supposed to be watching, but we are not doing the thing. Okay? We also do that in another way. Okay? In a different way. We keep on postponing as well. You know, I thank God for the opportunity to have a Bible study online with our loved ones okay? here in the Philippines in Qatar, okay, and sometimes even in Canada. And we have been doing that every Saturday. You know, it just needs to be started. Before, I was just dreaming of it. Could it possibly happen? Okay, though we are actually very far, okay, would it be possible for us, okay, to have that kind of Bible study? Okay? And I have to make that decision. Okay? We have to make that decision. Okay? And when I was actually praying, the Lord has been convicting me and trying to tell me, you have to do it now. You have to do it now. It should be now. Okay? Or it could not happen later on. You know, it is written across the different parables written by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then again, your time okay, is a treasure and telling us, He's telling us that God's Word is telling us that we need to spend our time carefully. What can we do for the Lord? How can we invest our time for Him? We need to learn his voice. We need to learn to hear his voice, particularly as it pertains to our time. I read, and this is what it says it is not the time, it is not time that matters in our life, but life in our time. A lot of people okay, and opportunities. I, I'm telling you, and perhaps things that should be done actually vanish. Actually, we're not done at all because of this thing in our 
time. So, first, we must remember that try to postpone it could drop our opportunity for service to the Lord. Secondly, postponement or delay could also steal our chances to become successful in this life. According to Psalm 75, 6 to 7, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He put that down one and seat that up another. But you know what? We need to do our part. We could, it could not just come to us okay, in a silver platter. We need to do something. We harvest what we actually plant. We don't need to be a believer. We don't need to be a Christian in order to understand that point or in order to understand that concept or in order for us to understand the truth. It holds true for everyone, whether a person is a Christian or not. Whether a person is unsaved or not. Okay? There is no successful person who keeps on delaying, who keeps on procrastinating. A few weeks ago, we were at the airport waiting for our flight going to Davao. Okay? There was a lady who was told by an airline staff that she can board the plane going to Hong Kong okay? and she was already late. Okay? See, every preparation that was done by that lady, okay? the day was wasted okay? for being late. They okay, been late for just a few minutes, not even an hour. Okay? So the question for us is this, what is the picture of our life? You know the hourglass? I don't know, you know yung black glass? Okay? Do you know that one? It measures the time interval. Sometimes when you are playing chess, they are actually using that. When you are playing uh, some board games, you are not really playing that, okay? Where there is actually a tiny tube at the center of it, okay? And there are two bowls, and then you keep on, you know, reversing it, okay? Could you imagine what I'm, I'm telling you? Na imagine you ba yung sinasabi ko sa inyo? Okay, pag kayo yung naglalaro, okay, invert ninyo, okay, and then the sand, okay, would actually be passing, okay, through that tiny, okay, tube, okay, one grain, I suppose, okay, one grain, I suppose, at a time. They come, actually, in a single file, okay, you know, this is actually a picture, of our life. Why? Because our life, I believe, all of us are actually very this day. Okay? Even in a very toxic day, the crowded hours, hours that we have, okay, would come one moment at a time. That is the only possible way they could come. Okay, just like that tiny grain of sand, okay, it will fall, okay, only one grain at a time. They actually come to a single file. And that also is a picture of what is happening to our life. Okay? Those grains are actually our activities, but they will pass through time, only one at a time. And we need to take every moment, okay, the best and invest it in the best possible way. It will come, okay? And it comes again and again. All I report dated, dated 19 January 2023, 
Okay? This is the title. And you know, it got my attention. It says, uh, Philippines, Metro Manila, traffic drunk, the worst, the worst, worst. I don't know if you have read of that in the world in 2023. Okay? Wow. Okay? You go outside and you would, you know, experience the, you know, the traffic. Okay? You know, in New Zealand, I could drive from our place to Wellington for just one and a half hours. You know the distance? 150 kilometers. Okay? 150. One and a half hours. But I was imagining, no. if it is here, I would not do that. Probably I would just be there somewhere in Imus or, uh, you know, to be right our priorities in life. Writing it on a piece of paper, and sometimes, you know, it helps us. But you write it, and then you post it somewhere where you could see it daily, where you could see it every day, so that we will not forget it, so that we will be reminded. As someone said, and I would like to know, time okay, is inexplicably okay, a raw material of everything. It's the spiritual molecular structure of our world. And this is true, okay? Because everything that we have is actually being defined by time. Our education, if you are a student, okay? Our family, if you are a family person now, if you have your own family, our marriage, our career, if we are already working, okay? Our relationship with our friends, our relationship with the Lord, all of this are actually being defined by time. If we have to do a charting of our time, if we have to do it now, okay, and give an account of it, how would it look like? Would we be saying, oh, I used it in the best way possible? Or would we be saying, oh, I have wasted so much of my time? If we have to grab it, okay, how would it look like? Ano kaya yung itsura ng grab natin? Is it increasing the way okay, we are spending it? Okay, especially the time we are spending with the Lord, the time we are spending with our loved ones, with our family, and so on. Is it decreasing as time goes on, as time goes by, or is it just the same until today? Okay? So procrastination, trying to delay it, will rob our opportunity to serve the Lord. It will also rob, it will also steal our opportunity to be successful in this life. 30. Postponing it could also steal our opportunity of being saved. If we have not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, you know, try to postpone it. Nanakawin niya. Okay? Ang pagkakataon sa atin para maligtas. In Acts 24, verses 24 to 26, this is what it says. Several days later, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul talked about righteousness, self-control, and judgment, to come, Felix was afraid and said, that's enough for now. You may live. When I find it, take note of the word, convenient, okay, I will send for you. Okay, and verse 26, it says, at the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bride. So he sent for him frequently and talked with him. 
you know, the word convenience. I know it is a very familiar, familiar word to, to all of us. Okay? Convenience could actually be very dangerous. Okay? As it may not come and we will not be able to do what we are supposed to be doing. So every time you pass by, by a convenience store, we have a lot, you know, a number of uh, convenience store here. Remind yourself. Let's remind ourselves of the things that we need to do. The sessions that we need to be acting upon. Things, okay, that we need to do at that particular time, at that particular moment. You know, whenever and wherever Paul was actually sent, okay, he was preaching the gospel, okay? And there's two persons whom he was speaking with, okay? Listening to him, okay? They don't have self-control, okay? And they were just waiting for God's judgment to come. And they actually resisted the gospel during that particular time. Okay? You know, I was reminded that when the gospel enters the realm of the life of a person, when it is already starting to touch, you know, the activities of the person, okay, the gospel is powerful. Okay? Many are actually trying to resist it. As just like what Hebrews is telling us, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing, dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Okay? You know, sometimes we intend to do something, but ending up not doing it at all. You know, intention is good. If we are intending to do something good, it is actually good. But we need to act at the moment because it may not come. It may not come anymore. You know, the two persons, Felix and Drusilla, hey, they actually bury. They bury the chance of having the Lord in their life. Okay? That's exactly what actually happened to them. If we keep on postponing, if we have not yet accepted the Lord, this is the time. Okay? You know, that God is telling us we need to do something. Or we need to do something in our own family. We need to do something in our service to the Lord. Let's listen to that voice from the Lord. And we need to act. Because that particular time may not come again in our life. You know, my family is attending and serving a small church in New Zealand. It is a pioneering one. When I remember with the first service done in our own house, we gladly opened our place to church activities like prayer meetings, like Bible studies, and even services at the start. And we were also, we are trying to encourage our brethren to do the same. Majority of the members of the church are actually nurses. And karamihan po sa kanila. Kasi karamihan po nang pumupunta doon in our place are actually nurses. Okay? To tell you, nurses could easily take presidency there at the moment, or even, you know, in Australia. But of course, the Lord's guidance okay, and direction for us and for our family is the most important thing. Okay? We could be blessed wherever we are, be, be it in another country, okay? or here. Even the Philippines, okay? We believe, okay, that what we have, and it is also the same with all 
all of us. Okay? We are just caretakers of God. It is actually owned by the Lord. That is why every birthday that we have there, house blessing, if there is, okay, anniversary, if there is, okay, as much as possible, okay, before we eat, okay, sabi nga namin, okay, it should be, you know, spiritual food first, okay, there should be a preaching of God's word. You know, procrastination, trying to dilly-dally, trying to delay it, trying not to do it, okay, at all. Okay? When we do it, okay, we are not taking account of the uncertainty of life, unpredictability of life, okay? One of our friends there, okay, you know, his, his father was actually sinning in the church and suddenly he, she just fell down. Then, upon arrival at the hospital, she was in the church serving the Lord. Life is unpredictable. But praise God, she was actually serving the Lord in that particular moment. How many times, okay, have you heard the statement, I am not ready. I am not yet ready. Being applied in different situations, okay, how about if that situation is not having at all a second chance? How about if that situation is just the only situation that will happen in our life. Okay, as a, as a Proverbs 27, 1, and I would like to read this. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring. Only today has a great place in our hands. Only today, yesterday has passed already. It comes a Bible, okay? It uses different metaphors. Try to picture, try to describe what our life is. But it is being likened to a vapor. It is being likened to a mist. It is being likened to a flower. It is being likened to things that could go past very easily. Okay? Sabi ni James, and I would like to read, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, daily on business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So, he is telling us okay, that today, today, is the most important day. Today, we are still here. We are still breathing. We are still living. We are still able to move. Okay? But tomorrow is actually the day. We could not trust it. It may come or it may not come. Okay? It may come. I would like to repeat that or it may not come. Kaya sabi sa Hebrews 3.13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So, you know, trying to postpone it okay, will, you know, for us many times. Without any reason, okay, you just don't want to act on it, okay? We don't take many times the uncertainty. We don't take account, I should say, the uncertainty of life. And many times, we don't, when we are doing it, we also are not taking account the uniqueness of God's conviction in our life, okay? Tomorrow, as what I have said, 
is not actually certain. When God is speaking to someone else to do something, to act on something, that's why we need to be prayerful. Lord, guide me, even in my decisions, in the decisions that my family is actually making. And that decision, and I know God will not confuse us. God will need us okay? where He is actually leading us. When God speaks, the moment is actually now. Kaya sabi ni Solomon, and he has this insight. Remember, Ecclesiastes 12.1, your creator in the days of your youth. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil days come not, nor the years draw not, when thou shalt say, I am no catcher in death. I remember taking the practical exam in my laboratory subjects. Every three minutes, the bed was being wrong. Okay? And you have to move from one number to the next. Okay? And you have to answer the questions that are there. Usually there are three questions okay, in one number. When you are not following the instruction, you will take the next. Okay? Upon hearing the bell, okay, you need to move. You need to move to the next number. Okay? And in our life, that is also a bell. And it is telling us when it is already ringing. It's already time. Time is up. But you know what? Unlike the laboratory exam, it is like our own bed is specific for us. Okay? It's not for everyone. Okay? It will ring in the future. And there is no retake. Just like that exam. In that exam, you could have a retake. But not in our life. When you reach that point, unless the Lord you know, wills it, and you'll be given a second chance. Okay? The master planner, the Lord has called us to do something for His kingdom. That is why He provided us, you know, with what He did. He provided us with, you know, resources. We have gifts. We have talents. We have opportunities. Now, we still have the time. Okay? And He is expecting us to do our task. The question is, how far have we gone doing our task for the Lord? How far? Is there something that we still need to be acting upon right now? Mga bagay, inalimutan na natin, oh, we don't want to act on that. I don't want to face that right now. Okay? You know, the word with the phrase is, the sooner, the better. We do not keep on postponing. So remember, my brethren, try to postpone so many things in our life. Still, minanakaw niya our opportunity to be of service to the Lord. It could also still our chances of becoming successful in this life. And lastly, it could even still our chances of responding to God's call. And that is of being saved. So let's not forget God has a time table for all of us. We need to have what the Lord is telling us. We could not trust tomorrow. It may come or it may not come. So I hope that God is speaking to you. When, you know, if you are to make a decision for the Lord, let's not procrastinate it. Let's not say to ourselves, oh, I could do it tomorrow. I could do it next Sunday. There will be another Sunday for me or another month for me or another year for me. We don't know. Life could be very uncertain. And let us pray.